Hello friends, it's Jaden, the Bait the Bait, head editor and producer. I just wanted to let you guys know that the podcast should be coming out every other Wednesday as Lori and Jocelyn forgot to mention that in this week's episode. Once again, it should be coming out every other Wednesday, so mark your calendar. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Lori Coates. I am behavior analyst and school psychologist and co-coordinator of the BAIT team in Davis School District. I'm Jocelyn Ruiz, co-coordinator of the BAIT team, also BCBA, and welcome to our next episode of BAIT Debate, Topics We're Tackling. BAIT Debate will address simple research-based behavioral practices that will work with individual students or groups of students in school settings. The situations and questions will be adapted from what we are hearing and seeing in schools. These are common struggles of students with all ability. Although these are simple strategies, they will be effective at making your day a little bit easier and decreasing challenging behaviors. We're excited to share these strategies to make them available to SPED teachers, gen ed teachers, and all other staff working in schools. We'd love for you guys to submit your questions. The email that you can submit those questions to is baitdebatepodcast at com. And don't forget to also check us out on Instagram and TikTok at behavior underscore in underscore progress. Last episode, we talked about functions of behavior and ensuring our interventions meet the same function of the student's behavior. Did you have any experiences recently, Lori, where this was critical, and can you share what you learned? Yes, absolutely. had a, a student, she was first grader, who, very busy young lady, not had a lot of school experience, really mm-hmm. was struggling with just being in school, and the team had tried, she's a first grader, so of course she would like any candy. Yeah. Right? So they had tried every candy in the world, every little Play-Doh thing, she'd like it for a minute, then she wouldn't. And we had a chance to talk to the, the stepmom who said she had a lot of neglect, like, in her past. And mm-hmm. so treats are not interesting to her, and, but she loves food. And what she loves are sour cream. Is it sour cream and onion? I don't know. The ruffles that have I, sour cream in them. Yeah, anyway, I think so. <laughs> she loves those and is very motivated by those types of things. So mm-hmm. once we found that out, we also found a lot more things that we can use uh, to work with with her yeah. instead of Skittles and M&Ms that everybody was trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sour How about cream you? and onion. Uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Gross. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, I had a student that we worked with a couple years ago who used to scream in class. Mm-hmm. And when we talked with the team about kind of what they were seeing and what they thought the function of the student's behavior was, they thought that the student was doing it as an automatic behavior. Mm. So kind of releasing some of that sensory stimulation by screaming. However, when we looked more closely at it, the student was only doing it when other peers were around. And if the student is doing behaviors that we think are automatic and there's other people around, it's probably not an automatic behavior and the function, probably attention in that case. Yeah. So yeah. We were able to determine that the function was not automatic and trying to figure out some other ways that the student could get attention from their peers in a more appropriate way. That's awesome. It's a good story. So what's our topic for today? Today we're going to be talking about feeling exasperated and exhausted because we're reaching that time of year. True. February is the worst and longest month for teachers. Yep. That is for sure. Yeah. (laughs) So when a teacher says or you hear teachers say I'm exhausted what do you see? Typically the student has been requiring a lot of support for quite some time. They have big behaviors and the teachers are just tired and they've run out of ideas of what to do. They also at that point they've had new people come in observe the student give them 18 more ideas Mm -hmm. and they don't feel like they can implement one more thing so they're just exhausted. They feel they've already tried everything, and they will say that. We've tried everything. Mm-hmm. Here's the interesting thing is that sometimes when we see the exasperated, I would say, the teachers just stopped caring. But over time, I've really learned that teachers are so invested in their students. I don't care if you're 5 or 18. 
most teachers yes. are very invested in their students. Yeah. And they take more responsibility sometimes than they need to. Like, it's their fault. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they see their administration is not supportive. But the truth is, everybody is at a loss yep. for what to do. Yes. And that's when we hear we are just exhausted. Um, so what are your ideas, Jocelyn, for combating that? The first, I would say, is and most important, find support. Find people that you can go to and ask for help. Yeah. This can be your administration. Uh, if you do go to them for support, make sure that you have some ideas of what it is that you need help with. They're probably more likely to help if you provide some solutions to how the challenge can be overcome. Let's see. And not just your admin, but fellow teachers or other staff. Knowing that there's somebody in your corner helps get through some of those tough times. And even just having somebody that you can vent to. Yeah, finding I, someone you trust. Yeah. Right? That you can just, okay, this is really hard. I need to vent. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. the student and how I feel yeah. about them. Even if it's just you're listening to me, that's mm -hmm. all I need True. in the moment. Um, yeah, finding some people in your schools or in your communities that can provide some support to you. Mm. And then if you do have students who have big behaviors, make sure you sit down with your teams and pinpoint the areas where the student needs support and figure out a plan for how to support the student. It can be a school-wide plan. I know there's been elopement or students not being where they're supposed to be has been a challenge this year. And one way in which we can ameliorate that is by having a school-wide plan. So if we take the example of elopement, having a code word that everybody knows in the school. Yes. When I hear this word, that means that certain staff are placed in a certain area in the building. We're watching cameras, whatever it may look like. Make sure you have a plan and that everybody in the school is aware of that plan and how to manage. And then you mentioned personalizing. Yes. That is one of the hardest things for teachers. They mm -hmm. really personalize. Yeah, because teachers, they want to do their best work and are always trying to figure out ways for how to help students. And sometimes they feel like it's their fault when things aren't working, but it's not. So stop personalizing. It's probably easier said than done. Yes, definitely. So. Yeah. <laughs> definitely um, so. You know, another thing that I was thinking about, I'm sorry to interrupt, no. but I think also... Stopping for a minute and remembering the things you like about the student. Sometimes you spend so much time in the moment yeah. of being exasperated that you forget that, you know, I really, I do like some things about the student. Mm -hmm. And I remember working with a teacher one time and I said, okay, I know it's been exhausting. I know you're tired. Find one thing mm -hmm. that you like about the student. And three days later, I got a text that said, I like his shoes. And I was like, there we go. It's a starting yeah. place, right? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anything we can start with. Mm -hmm. So definitely. I know. Do I, I do love that finding that one thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. when we meet with teams, that's been a question that we ask them when we first get a referral for a student. We ask them, tell us one thing that you enjoy or like about the student. And sometimes this is hard mm -hmm. for staff to find something that they like because they've dealt with such big behaviors all year. So we I've also been... When I have had those situations, giving staff that task to find that one thing. Even yeah. if it's the shoes. Even if it's the shoes. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I kids bet they're wearing were, great shoes. Yeah. I bet there were some pretty cool shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think interesting is you brought up, I know we're going to talk more about elopement later, but just kind of defining that term for schools. In another episode, we'll talk more about it. You know, elopement is the word we use for the student who runs away, whether that's within the building, in the classroom, out of the classroom. And as we're doing these podcasts and we have high school students helping us, yeah. we change the term. As they get older, we quit calling it elopement and we just say truant. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> Maybe we should, <laughs> yeah. when they're first graders, say, oh, we got a truant one again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that That'd be funny. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. And... I think you might have mentioned progress being slow. This yeah. is something that is sometimes challenging for staff and teachers, is the slow progress. And one way that you can help in seeing the progress is having a visual of your data. 
having graphs available, that makes it easy to see the progress, even if it is slow, looking at those increasing and decreasing trends. Yeah, I think that would really help with the exhausted, to mm -hmm. see that what you are doing is making a difference, even if it's this small, yes. Right? Yes. even if it's so little. Yeah, but always yeah. go back to the data. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, that comes to the end of this subject. We This is a shorter podcast, so we hope it's been helpful for you. We try to keep to the topic. Really quick, one last thing that I, I just wanted to mention is if you are feeling exhausted and exasperated, make sure you are finding your outlets mm. to yes. remain resilient and get through the day and come back the next day feeling a little bit more refreshed. What's your outlet when you're feeling exasperated and exhausted? Well, this is not going to be a surprise to you. Not to me, but <laughs> I'd love for other people to know about it. Yeah. So I love to jump rope. And every day after work, recently, yeah. I just started doing it every day. I look forward to it. Even if I know that when I get home, I'm going to be tired, I still do it because I know that once I'm done with it, I'm going to feel so much better. Yeah. So sometimes I do have to force myself to do it, but mm -hmm. I know that in the end run, it's going to be beneficial. Yeah. What's yours? Well, I, you've heard me say I hate that term self-care, mm -hmm. but that's the kind of thing we're talking about. And so I usually like to call it just an outlet. What is yeah. your outlet? What is it you do? And I found a lot of different things lately, but w during the warmer times, I am in the mountains hiking. Mm -hmm. I will go not even home after work and go straight yeah. up into the mountains and hike because I really mm -hmm. love the outdoors. But during the colder times when it's not as easy to get out and do things, to be very honest, it is just quiet time alone. I will tell my family, mm -hmm. I need 20 minutes. Please do not disturb me. Yeah. And I, sometimes I just play a crossword on my phone. Mm -hmm. But it's just time. Yeah. Especially sometimes. during these months, it's yeah. important to Agreed. make sure that you are doing something for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Bait Debate. We're excited to have this opportunity uh, to share behavior strategies. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think it may seem a little weird that a behavior analyst is talking about how you're feeling exhausted and exasperated, but it's a critical part of those relationships that we've talked about before and doing positive things for students. We hope the information presented was meaningful to you all today, and we have a lot of exciting topics we'll be covering throughout the school year to keep you reeled in. If you have educator friends who might benefit from this as well, please feel free to share it with the team. We'll catch you next time.